good lord, that's all wrong. <laughs> Why? Why? What happened? No, not like this. Good lord. Bear with me, folks. <laughs> Sarah? Sarah, are you okay? Yeah. Hang on, I'm going to put you in your window at least. I realise what happened. I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay, okay. I thought, I'll try out a fancy new design and move all these frames and everything, and I, I selected them all as one thing and moved them around and made it all nice and pretty. But, of course, we weren't in Discord at the time. So, it left all of your windows where they were before. <laughs> Which is not where the frames and things are now. Okay. Oh, 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 so professional. Thank God I figured out how to use OBS so I can get it quickly. Hey! Ta da! <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Excuse that mild panic there. Um, but we are sorted. My. Could do a little tweak like that. And yes. Okay. Let me try that again. Hello, wherever and whenever you are. <laughs> now that I've finally got myself sorted. And, yes, professionalism restored. Indeed. Thank you. And uh, welcome back to Icewind Dale and our game of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. As always, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here with us, my fair players, and... All of those out there in Twitch land. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, speaking of thank yous, I've got a couple more to say. As always, thank you so much to the VOD squad catching up on these stories of ours. If you can't catch them live, we always welcome you along to our journey, whenever that may be. And, of course, thanks to Sirenscape for the effects and ability to play music for you all this evening. And speaking of music, there is original Sirenscape pieces, but also amazing tunes from Dark Fantasy Studio. And then over on YouTube, RPG music maker Tra Travis Savoy and the Journey Epic Journey channels as well. And a recent addition over on Patreon, Will Savino. Please check out the uh, YouTube description for links and names to search for them. Um, actually, I just saw a video today of Travis Savoy actually did like an on-camera video for the first time ever, and he has a spectacular moustache. <laughs> it's a like, big handlebar moustache. It was amazing. <laughs> it's like, ah, I see, I see. Okay, so, where were we? Last time, having investigated further the reports of mysterious invisible thieves leaving dwarven bootprints, you stayed the night in Keraconic. The next morning brought a fresh set of prints to follow and a visit to Frozen Fire Expeditions to get kitted out for a trip to the looming mountain Kelvin's Cairn. It was there that you met your guide, Kestrel, who seemed to share a similar psionic gift to Mame and Mockingbird, another of Lake Hag Maud Chiselbone's little birds. However, she didn't seem in control of her gift, and you were soon on your way, along with the village's speaker, the Silver Dragonborn ex-adventurer, Trovus. Following the fresh trail, you found an imposing fortress hidden away in the craggy valleys of the mountain's north face, an area previously thought unpopulated. And after being mysteriously let inside through the solid stone doors, you then seemed to surprise guards on the interior. So, was it an ambush or not? We find ourselves in the entrance, a call to arms still ringing in your ears. And that would be where more often than not, a DM would call for initiative, but before we do, as you are clinging to the walls of this entranceway, looking around panically, 
hearing this echoing voice. To arms! To arms! You hear a clang of gear and the footsteps, booted, heavily booted footsteps, starting to make their way towards your location. Not knowing where to go, what to do. You freeze. Almost. And there's a... As if time is stopped. But the tableau that we see in this moment of frozen time does have one very noteworthy image. It is that of Kestrel, your guide, Mockingbird, and Mame, all simultaneously reaching to their skull behind their ear as a sharp jab of pain lances through all of your minds. Darkness. And Mockingbird. You find yourself outside once more. Knee deep in snow. Freezing. It's an unfamiliar feeling. And for a look, little while. Exactly, right? So you look down <laughs> and you're not wearing any of your furs. You're not wearing your boots. You are completely exposed to the elements. Someone's gonna die. And as you stumble forward, not knowing what to do, you realize that you can see, despite your lack of night vision. And it's because the whole wintry snowscape is illuminated by that undulating, shifting green curtain of the aurora that hangs in the sky above you. But that makes no sense. It was mid-afternoon at latest. As you stumble forward, you round a corner of rock, a buttress almost coming down from the hillside behind you, and you spy something that you've seen before. Now, where is it? Here we go. As an image that was shown to you by the huge primordial entity, Thrun, in that vision, once more swims into your view. And you see the castle lair of Oral, the Frost Maiden. Its crown of spikes rising up off the top of the castle, shaped and fashioned into a giant skull. And up atop that castle, illuminated by the aurora, letting out a deafening <coughs> cry. You see the albino rock, just giant beyond belief, just immense proportions as it spreads its white wings, perched high upon the castle top. And not knowing what else to do, you start to stumble through the snow, making your way towards this castle, the only shelter that could be had in any of this area. And as you're doing so, yours are not the only footsteps making tracks in the snow. As you hear a thump, 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 thump. And as you look around at the sound, you see a massive frost giant skeleton that you last saw pummeling, pummeling you into a cave wall and sat atop the bony shoulder blades of this frost giant skeleton. You see the dank hair hanging limply around the pallid features of Maud Chiselbone as she rides her skeleton pet towards the same destination as you. 
<laughs> there you are, my little mockingbirds. I always knew you had good things in your future. Look who's going up in the world. <laughs> And the frost giant makes better time with its longer legs and coping much better with the snow. It just forges ahead of you. You actually kind of make a beeline for it and kind of get into its tracks, which is much easier to move through than the fresh snow. And you arrive eventually at the bottom of this staircase that you can see in the picture as the skeleton with more chisel bone sitting atop it stands almost a century at the bottom. And she, you can see that she's looking expectantly up at the castle. And coming down from the castle itself, you can see a hunched figure with what looks like quite a large head moving on almost spindly legs slowly down the steps. And let me get this picture out of the way because I was thinking about making a screen for this, but our splash screen is perfect. As you see the avatar, glowing eyes in an owl's face, topped with curling, viciously spiked goat's horns, a ragged cloak hanging off its body, and legs furred, propelling it down the steps towards you, as Oral, the Frost Maiden herself, comes to greet you. Do you do anything before she arrives? I don't have uh, any equipment on me, do I? I'm pretty no. much... No, just like yeah. you in your skivvies and like barefoot in the snow. Instinctively at first kind of reach for my weapon and then upon seeing that everything is gone, I'll just kind of defeat it, look at the, look at the skeleton, look at Maud, look at this thing and just, I guess, go with the flow. Yeah. That's all I can do. <laughs> Oral lopes lopsidedly down towards you and stops about ten feet up the stairs, regarding you, head on one side. And then her head jerks to the side to, towards Maud's chisel bone. This is the one. Yes, yes, this is the one. Brought to you as requested. Very well. You there. The hag has said many things about you. And there is promise. Well, that bodes well for me. Do you have a, uh, a uh, some sort of job contract in mind? Kind of sweating nervously. Do not mistake me for one of those infernal contract scribblers. No. I have for you a gift. A gift to aid you on what you are already about. What kind of gift would that be? What can you offer me? And why would you offer me? There is a blight on my kingdom. My pristine preserved ice-bound kingdom. And you, she gestures off to the side and you can see as you look around you, now that the blowing snow swirling about the place, guff, just, you know, just being buffeted around by the winds, clears at her gesture. And you can see all around the base of the stair, frozen animals, people, statues, all sorts of works of art, beautiful things, all encased in some kind of magic ice, preserved pristinely for all eternity. 
and for orals and oral alone's enjoyment. There is a blight that has boiled up from the Underdark. To scar my perfect land. They have no love of form, merely function. Function, function. Take my gift. Destroy them. Drive them back. Or kill them all. There is nothing worth preserving there. Well, lucky for you, I'm quite good at that. You want the Duergar dead? Is that it? Is there any catch to this? You can just hear Maud cackling. She's like a stickler for the fine details. <laughs> I told you. I told you. It's just what we want. Just what old Maud wants. Shoot her a really sort of dirty stare. As does Oral. It's a quiet hag. Yes. All that I would have you do is keep my lands pristine, beautiful as they already are. Do you accept? Never figured myself for janitorial work, but in return for power, I might as well. Sure, I accept your offer, and I'll do a very polite, sort of curtsy-type bow. <laughs> very well. Succumb. Succumb to the cold. And be reborn. My chosen. You have been called that before. Actually, maybe not. Succumb. Feels similar. And just as in the picture, she reaches out a taloned hand towards you. Succumb. What do you do? I will succumb. I, I succumb. Okay. So however, just, that is, however that is done. You drop, <laughs> you drop down to your knees in the freezing snow. You've already lost all feeling in your feet. And you feel that same feeling start to creep up your thighs, starting at the skin and working deeper and deeper. And as that loss of sensation surges up through your entire body, right at the last moment, that clawed finger touches your forehead and you're aware of ice rapidly wrapping around you and encasing you entirely and the weird shifted image distorted almost fractalized image of the frost maiden's glowing eyes and that strange heart-shaped face looking curiously at you through the ice is the last thing you see as the cold of Aurora the Frost Maiden takes you. Yo, I... Sweet. <laughs> now, all of this happens in the blink of an eye back in Sunblight's fortress. It feels like nothing's happened at all. And as Soyala, Tom, you looked to your friends, and Trovis looks at Kestrel, he's like, oh, little Kestrel, are you okay? As you speak out, as they're holding on to their back of their skulls, you see Mockingbird convulse. 
and he throws his head back and opens his eyes. And even behind those goggles of the night that you gave him, Tom, you see an ice blue flash from his eyes momentarily escape the edges of those goggles and then all returns to where we left it and I now need to roll initiative so I I I already packed my dice so (laughs) where's where's initiative on this there it is now where are you, dear viewers? There we are. I found you. Excuse me. Click, 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 click. Now, excuse the um, excuse the token to the north of you. I'm I'm foreshadowing something a little there. <laughs> I will explain that in a moment once we've got this initiative okay. sorted. So let me put you where you need to be. Please add to your numbers there. The address of, the address will just had. stay with you, Mummy. Okay, um, so, so Yala, you can just click the zero there and enter your own. Uh, have you, you've used Roll20 before, right? Sorry, we haven't, I haven't, we haven't, this is our first fight. Proper big fight. Oh, wait, we had the, the sled chase, yeah, but... Yeah, big one. Sorry, yeah. I, was, I was busy killing Patch. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so let me get our allies in here as well. Speak of Trovus. Oh, yes. Look at this. Front loading with Mame. And little Kestrel. Boop. Oh, fast. Very fast. Nimble. Out in the mountains. Hey, Skeptic, how you doing? Welcome by. My Norwegian friend, I needed your accent to do the justice to the, the epic scene we just had, you know, up in the snow and the cold. <laughs> no worries, man. Um, okay, so let me get these fine Durgar in here as well. How are we gonna do? Shoop. Ooh, dear. Bring up the re- bring him up the rear. At the end of the... <laughs> Which is good for you, I guess. And stick that in descending. All right. So, we are good to go. Dear players, because you surprised them, right? And as I said, there's this cry went out of, of shock and surprise. Only the one that saw you got to do anything. And what they did is you saw them. They came running out from across the um, top of that junction above you and to the north of you there. And sorry, the uh, people back home can't see this. I have a dead Durgar there. Um, because as this Durga um, female came running out with her with her weapons drawn and her armor on, she came running across that. She's like, she was looking back over her shoulder. She's like, "I'll raise the fortress. I'll I'll get to Sunbright. I'll tell him what's going on." And as she was running across there, there was just a boom, 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 and a pick, a war pick, just flew in from the white from the from the east side there, and just embedded in her chest like so forcefully thrown that just took her off her feet and laid her flat on the ground not moving so she's there's a duogar body lying there with a war pick sticking out of her chest dead oh friendly fire so kestrel um so yeah because you surprised the rest of them you get one turn before so everyone think what you'd like to do to prepare okay so i think kestrel Thanks for the follow. Um, Kestrel is just going to... She draws her hand crossbow and she readies an action. As soon as a Durgar appears in that northern doorway, she's going to shoot. She's like, let's pick them off as they come through the door. We've got a bottleneck here. And um, Trovus is like, "Mm, yes, (laughs) splendid. Oh, and another. Thank you, Doll 13. Thank you so much. Um, And Trovus is like, yes. (laughs) Ah. Feels good to be back at it. And he hefts his... What has he got? Oh, he hefts his two-handed longsword. Just like... Draws it out of the the, um, sheath on his back. He's like... "Mm, 
Come on then, you Juraga bastards. Let's have a joke. <laughs> and you, um, he's a silver dragonborn skeptic. And, um, the Tristan. <laughs> Moment, what does the Tristan do? Curls around your shoulders. Yes, the Tristan will be on me. That's on you. Like so. <laughs> okay, so you're nice and cozy warm. Is, um, are you, are you doing anything? I'm just going to repair my longboat and, like, have it ready and, okay. like, an arrow, like, a magical arrow shining. Yes. Prepared. Trovis, Trovis looks very, um, impressed. As he, actually, sorry, he would have moved forward as well, um, to be ready as they, as they come through. Um, and, yeah, he looks impressed back at you as you draw the, and the energy starts to crackle and um, just uh, resonates as that magic arrow appears in your enchanted bow. Okay, um, anything else? Just readying that action. And what's what's the trigger for that when they first appear? Yes. Okay, thank you. I think, I think if, you're, if you're readying an action, that's all you can do. There's nothing else. If you want to have it as a triggered action. Um, okay, Tom, what you doing? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna surprise you. It's exactly the same thing everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. We're gonna ready an action for the first. Where guard's gonna be a uh, firebolt. Gotcha. Thank you very much. And staying where you are. Yes, sir. Thank you. So yeah, la. Yes, I would will. You, would you like to move off at And I'm going to cast blast at uh, second level, so I can do four people. Nice. So it'll be our main four group. Uh, so Mocking yourself Bird, as well? Yeah, yeah, myself, Mockingbird, Tom, and Mocking. Okay. Let's use this little hut. And that's all. Oh, this is a small map, so the token markers are as big as the tokens. <laughs> <laughs> Oop. Blessed. And so this is a D4, yes? Yep. R remind me, D4 on attack rolls as well? Uh, D4 on attack and saving throws. Nice. Okay. And yeah, unlimited, so use them as much as you want per <laughs> thing, yeah. Okay, dokie. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, Scrappy. Don't worry, there's no goblins here. You're safe. Okay, so. Thank God. You... <laughs> um, okay, so yes, you, you cl clasp the uh, claw amulet at your at your neck and there's just this, a faint kind of and, and this slight kind of almost texture to the air as this magic takes effect and all of you feel you feel pretty good you're pretty pretty good about this this, this is gonna go a-okay okay. Um, is that that's concentration for how long a minute thank you very much okay so let me actually let me put that on yours Okay. So, That's thank great. you. Next up is Mockingbird. What's your name, my friend? With your glowing yeah, eyes. Yeah, uh, I think I will try to sneaky sneak if I can. Because uh, I don't think anybody's watching me except for my friends. So I should be able to uh, stealth roll. Is that is that okay? If, I mean, yeah, yeah let's see if you can hide in that corner. I think that would be the only place, because you have to break line of sight as well. Yeah, from where, they'll yeah. where they will potentially see you. So, yeah, give me a stealth roll there. Mm. Okay, cool. Yoink. Okay, okay. You, feel, you feel pretty good. You're kind of up, up in the corner, just kind of like blending in. Kind of, you're, Remember, you've got these kind of stone grey cloaks that they got you at the Frozen Fire expeditions. Mm. So you're kind of like using that to kind of blend against the wall, and you think... You think uh, <laughs> this large, very oversized chicken standing in the middle of the room will probably distract them as they're running through the door? <laughs> that's what I was. Pl that's what I was planning on. So uh, I can't do that and prepare an action, though. Wait. No. Um, you can. Is stealthing is the the stealth is the action? Stealth is actually I can stealth as bonus action. I'm pretty do sure. You have it, so. Yeah. Do you have Do you have it as a bonus action yet? 
I believe so. Yeah, I will double okay. check. Uh, sorry, I should have checked this earlier. No uh, yes, cunning action as a bonus action, I can hide. So cool. uh, I can also prepare. I'm just going to prepare my short sword to hit whoever survives the first volley of spells. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, Josh, could you get our dear friend Skeptic up to speed quickly there? <laughs> just... Basically, well, that's right, I'll just say that because we've got a break. Um, um, they, everyone, everyone had a free round because they surprised them. So, just readying their actions. All right, thank you. Now, you hear the heavy footfall of boots as. Let's see here. Da -da. Indeed. It's the sound of a happy DM. Okay. So. First. <laughs> um. Let's see here. Okay. So yeah, the first one. <laughs> the first one runs into view here. <laughs> Now, this is going to trigger everyone, because this is the first one that's coming to view. So, <laughs> Kestra was first, wasn't she? So let's have her hand crossbow. That's an 18, so that hits. For three piercing. So as as this Jurgar runs into view here, um, <laughs> the crossbow bolt just, just thunks into his side. He's like... Argh! Um, and he gets three damage there. Um, next, uh, hasn't come through the door yet, so Trovis is waiting there. Um, Mame, go for it. Thirteen. Thirteen misses, I'm afraid. So as you uh, plus or roll a d4. Oh, get with your d4. Hand. Yes, thank d4. you, thank you, Zoyala. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> no one my age should ever do this. <laughs> oh, I did come out with a four. Oh. Hey, so that hits. Four. That's not it. That saved it. Okay, so I think your like eldritch arrow was like I think you'd assumed they had supersized already, so you like aimed high to get them in the head, and he's like flying way over this Jurigar, and it just stops, goes down, and just goes shoop, down into it. <laughs> There's some some okay. divine hand <laughs> like controls it. Six damage. Okay. Awesome. Um, we don't have any uh, resist. No, okay, that's all good. Okay, so six damage as this one is hit by the arrow when he thought he was safe. Next is Tull. Uh, Tull is really surprised um, by the, the arrow's unexpected arc and he's like, wow, I didn't make it do that. Um, <laughs> so he accidentally shoots wide and hits the pillar. Oh, you rolled it? <laughs> Missed? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I got under 13. Appreciate it. But um, bluff, bluff couldn't have done it. So yeah, like, Trovis, Trovis kind of like moves back as this gout of flame just like erupts off the pillar next to him. He's like, Grr! watch out there. Rookie move, rookie move. And, um, and... Uh, Mockingbird, are you still staying hidden there, yeah? Uh, yeah, because I don't think I can move with a, uh... Yeah, on a prepared action, so I'm just gonna chill here until somebody gets within stabbing distance. Yeah, okay, so he's gonna finish the rest of it. He just could come to here with the rest of his movement. And um, another one is gonna come running to here. Actually, let's get the proper. Uh, okay. So. Um, boop. Boop. To here. Okay, so another one appears in the doorway um, alongside. Um, his friend and this one is gonna go to there and then you see behind them um, Mockingbird you kind of kind of glimpse from your hiding place and Mama you can see uh, a much larger one <laughs> um, I don't think that arrow slit affords quite a decent as much of a view of that room as it gives in <laughs> roll 20 um, so you, yeah you see one of the supersized ones come charging um, towards the uh, the doorway there Although you don't think they could get through that gap. <laughs> so, 
Um, that is the end of that round, and it's Kestrel's go again, so she's going to try and shoot that same um, Jirugar that she hit before. Um, let's quickly do this. Okay. Poing. 22. That hits for 8 piercing. Nice, Kestrel. Nice. Um, so, oh, sorry, it's this one that she hit before. Okay, and this one. Now, everyone, um, we haven't had a combat since I started um, this. A new thing that I heard about, which I like, um, I think it was from Matt Colville. Um, I will t I will tell you when they look bloodied, which means they're at their half or less of their hip, hip points. And I will put a little yellow marker on the token. Also, I will tell you when they're on their last legs, which means they are under 10 HP. Because they, they look... Because, you know... Injuries mount up, right? So you're not you're not instantly going from full full um, you know you know movability and and uh, health to zero and out unconscious. So um, they are slowly getting injured and looking horrible. Um, so this this Jurigar that Kestrel shot just now is on his last legs. So that's what that red token is there. Okay. So that one looks that one looks really okay. bad. Yellow is like half or below. Oh no. Uh, yellow is for half from below, yeah. And Kestrel comes running up to next to you, Soyala, and she's like, <laughs> I, I'm only... Well, we lost Mame. <laughs> no. She was deeply offended by... Apparently. <laughs> she's like, kill Stealer. Sorry, I'm just going to leave it there. It's... <laughs> Tolnan, Tolnan, uh, Soyala just had to peep around the corner. Hello. Let me, let me just... <laughs> other, oh, way, other, oh, way, oh, other way, other way, other way. There you go. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Over here. <laughs> so, Mame will be back with us soon. Okay, and uh, Trovis' turn. Um, you know, his the, the held actions are gone now that um, this is, uh, you know, this has clicked around to the next round, so he's just going to step, um, he's just going to step past the doorway into the, and go for that one that uh, looks injured. So he steps next to you, Mockingbird. Um, actually, no, no, he'd go for the nearest one. He's going to, he's just going to step into the doorway. He's like, no, oh, no, you don't, you little bastard! And he swings with his great sword. What was that? I got a message from Sabrina. Internet trouble. Okay, oh. just back on in a second. She'll be fine. Um, okay, swoosh. Ah, twenty. Good job, Trovus. A thirteen slashing damage. Oof. Immediately bloodying this. Is bloody? Is bloody not here today? <laughs> bloody, are you in chat? Um, so that one is bloodied immediately by that swing. I think, has he just got the one attack? No, he has two. Ooh. <laughs> so he does a big overhead, just swings overhead, hits it, and then swings again. But only gets a 12, so it just like sparks off the top of the uh, doorway through there and he misses. And he's going to actually step out of the way so you guys can do your thing. Um, he's like, he, can, he's, he thinks he can tank it. So the Jura guy is going to get a second of opportunity with his war pick. Uh, 13... Uh, no misses. Yeah, misses, yeah. Just, just like, his war pick glances off his armor. Um, <laughs> below, below 10 HP, David. Um, so, that is that. And Mummy's back on, just for her turn. Welcome back. And Tony, you're up next. Yep. Trissom hisses menacingly as Mame <laughs> fires. Rhyme, I mean, uh, roll for his loading. Okay. I'm on. Where am I? Go, Where, go, go. Where's everyone? <laughs> Down, bottom left. <laughs> okay. Oh, hang on, I can, I can uh, ping, ping center you. Okay. Let's go, let's go. Roll that arrow, I assume. Okay, I can see. <laughs> Yay! Okay. I can fight. So the one with the one with the red dot is on his last legs. The one with the yellow is is bloodied, but that's gonna miss okay. even with the, even with the max D four. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you just okay. yeah you at least unleash another arrow, thinking is it that was a really neat trick? Is, uh, is it gonna just, just drop down from the sky before? <gasps> oh, Renji! We don't have any paladins in here, I'm afraid. But please <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. Welcome back. And the um, the arrow this time, unfortunately, just sails overhead. There's no course correct, I'm afraid at all. And it just clatters off that back wall. And um, any movement or any bonus actions? 
I'm going to... Ooh. Um, yes, I shall move a little bit to the side and lift my, lift the chasm on me. Yes. And just stay against the wall for a bit and end All my right. turn. Okay, thank you. So, as you do that, um, we are on to Tolan. So, Yala, you're next. Tolan, Tolan runs over real quick um, and takes a shot at this, uh, this poor fellow who's... Uh, on the last, last leg. Gotcha. I rolled a 15. That's so, I mean, not that enough. Four. Get that D4 you see that? Yeah. I rolled a 16. Meets it, beats it. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Just enough. Uh, four of the fiery damage. Four of the fiery damage. Okay, it is still on its last legs. Right, one, more leg. we... one more leg. One more leg. One more leg. Then we uh, hide back in our. Spellcasty corner over here. <laughs> Spellcasty right. corner? The best corner. Okay. It is the best corner. It's <laughs> where we don't get hit. Hopefully. <laughs> it's where the cantrip club hangs out. Okay. I'm not at the cantrip club yet. <laughs> not but... yet, not yet. <laughs> we and... are just. Thank you, sir. So, Yala, walking about you next. So, seeing Tom uh, do that and not being able to finish him, I'm going to take that same spot and <laughs> throw out a sacred flame. To okay. the one on its last legs. On its last legs. Hopefully. Okay. Go for it. Is that a roll to hit or an automatic hit? It is a DC 15 deck save. A DC this okay, it's deck save. These fellas are probably not the most dexterous. Nope. Two. If they hit, then seven radiant. Okay. Ooh. That'll that'll get him. That'll show him. There goes the legs. So Yala, for your first time since you've joined us over here on Phoenix Uwaki, tell me what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, so really it was just seeing what Tom was doing and then just kind of taking it like maybe in the leg where it looked maybe a little weaker mm -hmm. and uh, shooting out a uh, radiant light from her uh, pause. Nice. Okay, and, so yeah, you, yeah, you reach and then out. Yeah, <laughs> back into the, also into the corner. <laughs> okay, cast this corner. Okay, so you reach out and from your claws on your on your little tabaxi hands, this fire just erupts forth um, in a, a kind of golden light almost suffusing it as it just comes rocketing out and crashes into the feature. Uh, into the into the sorry leg of that um, of that Jurgar there, <laughs> and David Samalatha. Oh, oh, sorry, your uh, thing got me there, and um, it just <laughs> crumples to the ground um, as you defeat it. Hockingbird, we have somewhat of a choke point, it seems. Yes, we do. No one's coming Which... through to be sprung into your trap. No, no, I'm a sad boy today. And they are bunched together, which means my sneak attack is useless, so. True, true. I'm going to uh, peek my head out and then, oh God. <laughs> and Hello. yeah, just kind of, I guess put my foot on the corpse of this guy with no legs now and uh, take a nice strike at this guy right here. Okay. I'm gonna the, use uh, uh, the bloodied one. Yeah, yeah, the bloodied one. There we I go. will use Booming Blade as well. All right. Uh, uh, what is? Okay, so if if that pro I guess it's if that procs. Uh, all right, so here we go. Short sword and attack for me. Go, go, go. That's just damage. Was oh, the roll to hit? What? Yeah. What's what's going on? Did I not do that right? I need to. Uh, yeah. Go again. There you go. <laughs> ah, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, Great. cool. 21 will so definitely hit. 21 mm -hmm. for what looks like... Oh, I didn't roll damage that time. Uh, um, the, the damage is, was rolled before, right? Uh, I get, okay, yeah, I guess we can roll with that. Yeah, so, yep, six, so six piercing damage. Piercing damage, okay, on the uh, the bloodied one. Yeah. Notice. Um, and, and it is that now old... on its last legs. Okay. And then um, you're a swashbuckler, so you get that sneak attack, right? No, I do not, sadly, no. because uh, there's two of them uh, within, like, range of each other. 
so they're not technically alone. Do, um, do you get it from being? Oh, sick? I might, I might get it because they didn't see me. Yeah, you're right. So that would be six. On no, top of that you, you didn't attack from cover. You broke cover to attack. Oh, sorry. Even though I was hiding. Forward? Yeah, you, you, would, you, would have to, you would have to attack because you know it's all you. It's all you coming. You had to close the distance to get to it. If uh, if it had okay. stepped, if it had stepped next to you and you had attacked from cover directly from cover, you would have got that sneak attack there. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, uh, it's now sort of coated in this kind of staticky uh, white energy mm -hmm. uh, from booming blade. So That's... if it moves away from me at all, then it's going to get propped at that. But in the meantime, I'll hit it with my offhand daggers to uh, YOLO. <laughs> uh, that's a 19 to hit. That hits. Okay. And that is 8 to piercing from that one. Okay, look. Thank you. Just, uh... Everything okay? Yeah, no, no you did. I think, I think you did get that sneak attack, mate, because, um, sorry, I was just reading. Um, because it's attack against a creature. If you are within five feet of it, no other creatures are within five feet of you and you don't have this advantage. So the other one, the oh. other one's not within five feet of you. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I thought I thought it was like if there's if they're like bunched up together than that. Um, um, if, I mean, if if they were bunched like side, if it was next to him, on, if it was north of it, so that it would be within five feet of you, because it's okay. it's basically your um, you are un, unhindered to you know to attack as you wish. You know, there's no there's no other combatants nearby. Um, you're basically dashed up to be uh, one on one with this thing. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So yeah, no, you're good. You're good. Sweet. Then that's an extra eight plus an extra six damage in then that case. I hope that's. Hundred percent. That Give me a. Tell me what happens. Sweet. I'll just uh, dip out of that little arrow slip there, kind of like a really, you know, like like a game of whack-a-mole you would want to play. Just kind of pop up and <laughs> and then immediately duck back into this uh, little the corner. arrow slit here. Yeah. Okay. And run out. Gotcha. Okay, so That'll yeah, there's the, the super-sized Jogar just see you <laughs> just spin out, <laughs> attack this thing, you know, with a short sword, dagger, just like, you know, like dagger in the side of the neck, short sword, like, takes out its leg, and it just, like, just crumples immediately to the ground, and it's just like, <laughs> and just, like, doesn't even get to react, it's too, um, let me just double-check something, actually. I think you're oh, the yeah, only okay. one that, uh, it actually saw. Yes. <laughs> All the other attacks were like from the dark beyond. <laughs> um, yeah, if I were these guys, I'd be pretty spooked right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, the. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I wondered if, because if they're supersized, I thought, I wonder if they would have the 10 foot reach so they could have got the attack of opportunity, but they don't. You're lucky. <laughs> Still only 5 feet. Um, okay, so. They are going to. This fella down here, and yeah, okay. You just all of you in that room there. You just see these two large ones, like supersized ones. Um, just go boom, 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 boom. Um, actually, I need to get the distance here. Actually, they can they can dash because they're not using their other actions. So they just go sprinting across and past off to the east. And, um, I believe, yeah, the other one, <laughs> Mockingbird, you see from your corner there, like still peeking around, keeping an eye on things, you see this last, like, smaller one, kind of sneak through the door, quiet, trying to be quiet, and sneaks to that corner there, but they're just, like, completely in your view. But they haven't tweaked that you're there, and they're, they're trying to stealth and try to beat surprise anyone coming out and chasing the big ones, and um, just <laughs> completely, completely obvious that they're just they're just around that corner. I'll kind of gesture that to the uh, lovely dragonborn. Yeah. Uh, across the archway. Okay. Um, Kestrel's just gonna hold, and she's she's gonna you know get her crossbow ready, and she's just like, look, if any of them come in, I'll get them. But you don't, you. You do your thing. <laughs> She's like clearly very impressed. Um, and uh, Trovis, Trovis is like, yes, <laughs> yes, I'd say so. Uh, time, 
time for some young blood to have a crack with the whipper. And he, uh, he kind of like plants his long sword on the ground, puts his hands on the pommel, and is like standing back, kind of looking at you all, ready, ready in case anything comes through the door. But uh, enjoying this whole show. And uh, Mame, it is your turn. Tell your next. Can you see? Can you see our less than stealthy friend? This guy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll move. Sucks to be him. One spot. Yep. I could be, so I could shoot him. Mm -hmm. He does have some. He does have some cover being around the corner. Mm, okay. So watch I out. I the move a bit. Sorry. I stop the move. Um, the problem is because because um, you're firing through that quite quite restricted exit way that um, that small area there. Um, it's it's a it's a tricky shot. So it, it's going to be. Okay. It's going to be a bit extra on his AC, regardless, unless you actually go out into that corridor. Mm, I'll just stay here. Okay. And I'll roll. Gotcha. <laughs> Nine. Nope. Okay, it's just. Even a... with the. Okay. He unfortunately, he sees it coming and he like ducks around the corner um, and, and just ricochets off that far wall before the magic dissipates. Um, any more movement? Mm. Bonus action? I'll go. I can't really do anything with like my spells or weapon fighting because I don't have anything, and I can't use wing flap in this area. No, I don't think so. Um, I'll just end my turn. Okay. And Tom, so I, so I, you're next. One, two, three, four, five. All right. I wanted to be able to see him. Gotcha. Um. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to hit him with a ray of sickness. Okay. Go for it. All right, I'm gonna need that D4. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> um, it's gonna be a six, 16? 16? Just hits. All right. So that's gonna be. 2d8 and a con save. All right. 14. Con save. And um, what damage is that, please? Uh, damage type is poison. Okay, look. Seven. And um, I got 16 on the saving throw. A uh, pass. Nothing. Okay. Nothing happens. Okay. So unfortunately, he shrugs it off. Anything else? Oh. Wow. Um, well, um, I'm not really the type to stand here, so just step, step back in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> gotcha. So yeah, your turn. Alright, um... Yeah, I guess, uh... Two big boys are injured yet, they're lurking around there. Right, uh, with Mame, how Mame had the shot, it was at a disadvantage? Uh, not a disadvantage, no, but they have a plus to their AC, because they have cover. Ah, okay, okay. Maybe that would be... Okay, yeah, that's a better line of shot. Okay, I'll move up, and then, yeah, uh, same as last time, do another secret flame. Okay. So it's a, the other uh, DC, 15 dex. 15 dex? Okay, is, is this an also hit one? Yeah, if it hits, uh, or if it, they So yeah, the flames just lick around the corners of the uh, of the wall there and still get it regardless. Okay, so uh, deck saving throw. Boop. Four. It's only three damage, but it's not the... Every little helps. Okay. So yes, his beard is somewhat singed. A little bit. <laughs> now get up. Thank you. Okay, 
that is done. And Mockingbird, your turn. Oh boy, here I go killing again. I'll run up here. Oh, there they are. Okay. Um, yeah, I kind of poke my head out here again. And yep. as I'm running out, this arrow slit thing. What? What do I see the the the, the big boys doing? I'm um, just curious. They they are just standing there. You know, just, you know, they're standing there with weapons in hand. Standing there menacingly. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, I'm going to come out here and whack a mole this guy. Um, so. Just a moment, please. As you do. Oh. oh, boy. Said weapons are hurled at you as the two big guys had their javelins ready and were waiting for someone to come out into the corridor. And both of them oh, throw boy. their javelins at you. So, the first one... I will reactively shield. These guys have so many different things here. Javelin, enlarged, ranged. Okay. <laughs> it's different options. So many different options. Uh, 15? Uh, that will miss. Okay. And the other one, there's two of them. Hmm. 23. <laughs> that... Yeah, even with shield, that will hit. I should hope so. <laughs> this level of the game. <laughs> okay, so yes, um, the first one, the first one, like glances off this magical shield that um, appears behind around you, but the other one, the magic of the shield spent by the first blow, manages to find its way through and thuds into your shoulder for eight piercing damage. Okie dokie then. I will take that, unfortunately, and pretty much go with my current objective. Okay. Kind of try to shrug it off as best I can. And Go for it. Beyblade this guy to death. Um, so let's see. That'll be first with the short sword. Uh, that is only a. Oh, currently that's a 15 to hit. So. Okay. Give that D4. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that does that go? Or do I need the uh, bless? Yep, with the bless. You need the bless. Cool. Yeah, you have the bless. Yep. All right, then. Oh well, I, I assume 15 hits, right? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so but, but it's 16, yeah, so it, it, whatever, it's whatever, the whatever the bless is, it's okay. Got it, got it, got it. Got it, got it. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever the bless is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. All right. Uh, yeah, then that is... Uh, even even a shoddy bless will get you through. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I can... I, yeah, okay. Well, then, with that one, that'll be 16 uh, with the, the sneak attack for nice. the short sword. Okay. Um, and then... That puts him on his last legs. Cool. All right, here comes the... Uh, dagger for an 18 hits uh, with seven piercing. Now, remember, you don't add your um, bonus to the offhand oh, attack. That's right. That, that is so yes, right. Just, for that. just a straight d4. No, no, it's, just, it's on the damage. It's on the damage. Oh. Um, oh, okay, just a d4. Ah, uh, yeah, it doesn't auto do that. Okay, yeah. Right, so it's so three. Only four piercing. No, it's three. It's three piercing. The dice was three, plus four. If you, if you roll over it, it shows you what the roll was on roll Oh, 20. is that my dex modifier? Yeah, it's, it's plus okay. your dex, yeah. God, I'm okay, sorry about that. Yeah. no problem. Three so yeah, that's that. three damage on that one. Okay, still up, I'm afraid. Alrighty, then I will duck. Okay, so and he's going to attack you as you move away. Uh, with rakish audacity, he does not get that chance. God damn it. Yeah. Damn your, damn your rogue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Zoid bird noises. <laughs> Thank you. Right, okay. There is that, and he is just gonna shout, he's just like, Rah! for some blight! And he's just gonna come charging into that and just go for Trovus. Actually, no, yeah, he's gonna go for you, Toln, actually, because he can see you there, and, and you were the one that came, attacked him before. And Trovus is just still standing there, he's like, yes, yes. <laughs> nice, no, good, good roguing, good roguing. Carry on. <laughs> And uh, so yeah, it comes charging at you, sa, and war pick, normal sized, twenty three. You know, you'll be surprised to find that. Mm -hmm. it's... Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> so that is ten piercing damage as this war pick just gets right between a couple of the armored plates, right into the workings. Thanks, Trovis. <laughs> He's like, no, oh, you've got this. You've got this. And, um, Kestrel's, Kestrel's like, oh no, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be guiding you, 
you, sh you can't go down you can't go down on a job and um she comes running up next to Mame and brings up her hand crossbow to shoot at the Jurigar that came running through and that is gonna be not you huh. oh natural 20 she's very professional <laughs> and that is six piercing which is let's see how's he doing yes okay so I guess was like no 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 these are, these are paying customers. This is like, he just goes into his throat and he just falls back dead. Oop. And she stays back there. Trovus nods. He's like, hmm. Oh, well done, young Kestrel. Yes, fine shot. Mummy. Okay, I'm going to, seeing as her popped out, not pop, pop dead, drop dead, god damn it, anyway, <laughs> there <is>. um, <laughs> I, I shall, I'm going to move and pop my, seeing what happened to my friend Rocking Bird, but still, seeing if I could pop my head out. And see, see. I can't see them. You can sort of see You're the corner to here. Mm -hmm. And so let's see what you can see. Central L. Yeah, that's not enough <laughs> to cast. Okay. Okay. I shall be so bold as to. Can I? Slip through here? Can I step out? Actually, is it yes. big enough? Yeah, it's just fine. Yeah, it's fine. It just, it just, this is the main entrance. It's okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Lord, please. But I oh, chicken, just my little chicken body be smaller. One more, one more step. One more step. Oh, God damn it! Fuck it. <laughs> and then, oh no! Chicken kebab. Shoo, shoo. Two. Enlarged javelins come down the corridor, and let's see how we do here. Please, miss, please, miss, please, miss, please, miss. <laughs> First one. Thirteen. Yes, it's cut damn it. I just. Oh. Yeah, it's already. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, that is eight piercing. So you, the rest of you, you see, you see. Mame kind of tentatively step out into the corridor and this this huge javelin just goes pierces and glances off her shoulder. It goes through the feathers there. You see a little puff of feathers get knocked off. And another one comes whistling through the air. 18. 11 piercing. You still up? Still up. Oh, nice. And another one comes whistling down the corridor and thumps into her side. And please cast away. You now have a full clear view. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast Hail of Thorns. Well, first I need to see the hits. So I shall to see if my bow hits. Okay. And <laughs> oh, 10. And then yeah. plus the... It's only a d4, sorry. It's not gonna be enough. Your 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 aim is, is clearly shaken by this uh, this heinous gr injury that you've suffered in these javelins. I think one of them's still stuck in you, just like moving around, so it's like clanking off the stonework. <laughs> it's like clank, clank. Here we go. I'm gonna... <laughs> Must take a shot. <laughs> I'm gonna step back in with do that. my you boy. Come back with me. They get a tap of opportunity. Oh no no no! They have to be next to you. <coughs> okay. I am down for the count. Not literally, but just for my turn. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> careful, careful how you say it. <laughs> Tell. Tolan goes, oh, that looks painful. Um, and he sprays, 
Braves uh, Mame down with some of the good stuff. Excellent. You do that, uh, sir. For seven healing. Uh, for for our new friends, he's got kind of like a spray can under his arm, and he's kind of shakes it. <laughs> sprays sprays where it hurts. Like a graffiti kid. <laughs> Basically. He oh, writes tall in the feathers. <laughs> <laughs> tall was here. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just tag and don't mind me. Uh, and then we'll step back into the caster corner. Indeed. Okay. Done. So you have it. Mame, what what was out there? <laughs> there there's Do two big vulgar ready to fucking javelin you if you step out there like this. So You said like painfully and like, I just, like, just like, pull it out yourself. <laughs> Don't go out right now to have javelin prepared. Unless <laughs> you have a big shield to go out there with. Don't, don't, don't be stupid like me. I mean, if to you kind of, have a to, shield... Uh... To, to meta-gain to meta this to an extent, but I think you would be aware of this. I mean, you know, they haven't had a chance to prepare again. I how much firepower they got. Yeah, they cannot, they cannot throw two... In, you know, they cannot have two prepared actions within a round. Uh... They... So I'm going to gingerly step out and see... Okay, you see them. They're, they're, they're kind of like they're kind of slow motion almost. They're, they're in large size. They're like, rrr, rrr, and they're like fiddling with like these holsters of these enlarged javelins, drawing out more javelins at the ready. Okay. But not ready to throw um, them yet. Seeing one of them now, I'm going to do a guiding bolt. I'll just do the one that's straight. Over. North or south? South. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, the south one. Yeah. Uh, let me try and get more. Uh, 14 probably does not hit. Um. Well, what's the um? Well, there's no roll to hit on that. That's the deal. That's damage. That's 12 radiant damage. Oh right, right. Okay. Uh. Need the need the hit roll. Make a ranged spell attack, so I thought. Mm-hmm. Yep, so you need to oh, roll. You need to roll with your oh, with your attack not modifier. Not okay. <laughs> so top of the spells there, click your spell attack modifier. Where is that? I'm just at the top of the spells. Sorry. You have your uh, spell save DC and your attack modifier. Is that just my wisdom? Um, it should be like on D and D Beyond. If you go to the spells. In between spells... actions and equipment. Sorry, I'm I'm learning my D and D Beyond right yeah, now. Yeah, no, no, no problem, no problem. So yeah, um, on the spell tab of your um, D and D Beyond, you have yeah. your spell attack plus seven. Nice. Ah, I see it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I think I think you just if you just click the spell attack. I haven't used the dice roller on D and D Beyond. I think that should be clickable for you. Yeah, nice. Whoa, 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 just once. One didn't work. I just kept clicking. The Dugan okay. disappears in a, in a blind, blind guiding bolts, just <laughs> ricochet down in a flurry of guiding bolts. <laughs> Monk magic. Okay, thank you. So the first one was a 20, so that's, that, that'll stand. That hits. Yeah. And so the damage okay, was so 12 then, radiant. Uh, yes, 12. And the next attack has advantage, I believe, yes? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, it would be um, next attack on it, it's advantage. So, uh, with that, I am ducking back out and into my interval. <laughs> Just like, boop, boop, And boop. saying, I think one of them, uh, one of them will be shining very brightly. Aim for that one. I think we have a little <laughs> bit of time left before it's got that javelin ready. I say this to uh, Mockingbird. Mockingbird. Yes. Oh boy. Um... <laughs> well then. Yes. Uh, okay, so let's see here. I'm pretty much at the end of the turn. So they're gonna get to go right after me. And how much movement do I have? One, <laughs> two, uh, 
three, four, five, six. And, okay, I'm not liking my options here. <laughs> um, two, and then. All right, well, screw it, I guess. I'm going to uh, just kind of like look back at the group and then charge in. Because I don't have many ranged attack options. Trovis, Trovis um, is like, that's my boy! So I'm going to <laughs> run in to right about here. I'm going to attack uh, this one okay. with the short sword. Gotcha. And that is no bueno. I'll roll that d4, but I don't think it's going to gonna do much. That's no, not going to be enough, I'm afraid. It's, it's not the one that she attacked. Oh yeah, I have advantage, yeah. Oh, I do, yes. If, if it's Thank the... You. Yeah, okay. If it's, yeah, the one on the bottom, that one is glowing. Like a Christmas tree. Okay. Do a Christmas tree. Very easy to see. That is 23. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that is a okay. little bit better. A little bit higher. Tiny Unfortunately, bit, you, don't, you don't get this... Now, in this this is yeah. the case where you don't get the Um So that's right, five, five piercing. Doesn't... He doesn't need it, right? Mm. Oh, he has advantage. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that is... I do add it. Oh, so boy. you come skipping around the corner and, like, you know, Naruto run down the corridor, <laughs> like... <laughs> that type of thing. Um, spring into the air, plant a foot on its knee as it's turned around trying to get these javelins out of its back satchel. Tell me what happens. <laughs> that was enough. Oh, that one's gone. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, yeah, well... There. Going with the Naruto anime metaphor, I'm just gonna like hail of blades and just start <laughs> slicing and dicing his legs until it falls over. Okay. Um, sweet, yeah. And <laughs> then, well, yeah, once that one's kind of falling down like a like a nice timber tree, <laughs> I'll turn on this one with a uh, bonus action. I think as um as you do uh, knock it down, I think it goes back to normal size. <laughs> it's gonna drop down to the ground. And then you have to go uh, with the yeah. offhand. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Let's. Oh, that is not great. Okay, cool. So, in that That's case. Enough, yeah, I have not. No, I just, just used it. Yeah, so I will stay here. That will okay. be my turn. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> okay, so this Druga stops going for his javelins as you're right up here in his face and swings out his oversized war pick. And he's just like, nah, you, you killed my friend. I'm just gonna go for you with his uh, war pick. And that is gonna be... <laughs> 18. Yeah, you can roll that damage. That is if you want to. seven piercing. Okay, I'll take that. And he... Seeing all of these nasty little, nasty little beasties popping in and out of this doorway down the end of the corridor, he's going to actually walk, stop past you, and stay within range, so not get this opportunity attack. But he's going to pop around that corner there, and stay in contact with you. Mm. And Kestrel's turn. You, you hear Kestrel's voice, Mockingbird. Um, actually, I think under this duress, um, <laughs> she, um, she, she once again, like last time, mistakenly uses her um, telepathic abilities and you hear Mockingbird's voice in that's right <laughs> Mockingbird you hear Kestrel's voice in your mind and she's like um, is it safe to come out do you need our help hi you've reached in the number of Mockingbird please leave a <laughs> message after the beep now um yeah it's uh, safer than it was before and then I'll just you know say that completely in my mind I, I think I know what's going on by now yeah, and you hear. Be able to do that. Um, okay, and she comes as far as there. Zoop. Zoop, zoop, zoop. <laughs> Thank you. And um, you see her come running out with the with the crossbow ready, but she has to dash to get there, so she can't shoot this time. And Trovus is like, no. "You gotta take all the fun. Leave one for old Trovus." And he starts, you know, he hefts his long sword and goes running out after Kestrel. What has and he been doing this whole time? He was just watching. <laughs> Speakers. <laughs> Look, in a position of power like that, it's all about delegation. 
Yeah. Okay. And he comes running out here. I got here. Noob to do it for me. <laughs> and um, with his longsword ready, you're just in front of Kestrel to keep Kestrel safe. He's like, Ah, oh, cheers, Skeptic. Take it easy. And um, he goes running out ready to, to do battle next time. Mummy. Mummy. I am a bit peeved <laughs> about being shish kebab <laughs> and holding one of Hag's gifts. I pass. I step out. Yep. Holding my neck. Bring the kitty along with me. I step out. She's, she's, she's like, like stretched angrily out. You've got like, like the tressum just like just hanging under one arm. It's like just like just you got it around the top legs. It's just like hanging there. It's like Meow. and you've got this other hand like up on your on your uh, up by the uh, parasite. And I cast Desolate whispers. <laughs> okay. So Kestrel kind of looks around alarmed as she feels that. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I just pressed it. I just wanted to see what the thing was. Sorry, please continue. No, no. Yeah. Um, Kestrel looks alarmed as, as she, she senses this um, effect. And Mockingbird, you sense it too. As this um, this insidious kind of whispering just kind of like... Just like fills the air. And um, only only you two hear it. Um, the others don't. And the the Duragar kind of like he's like, mm, mm, it's like up at his, you know holding onto his head. And uh, what does that do? Is that that wisdom save there? Wisdom save of fifteen. Okay, look. If he fails, then he's frightened, I believe. Okay. Um, and he has advantage, I'm afraid, against spells like this. So, um, wisdom save is it? Boom. Fifteen. Passes. Okay, then he'll take half the damage. Okay. So that is four psychic damage. Oh this is good this is good revenge for Burrell. <laughs> fighting them fighting them with psychic damage. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Mame? No, I'm done. Okay. And Tom. Tom looks to Zoyala. I guess it's okay. Um, <laughs> and then runs up. Three. And we're gonna go right there. I'll and we're just gonna we're just gonna toss a firebolt at him. Go for it. Uh twenty before the bless, so that's gonna hit. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but it's only gonna be a, a measly two damage. Two damage. Okay, dokie. Thank you very much. So yeah, slight singeing of his uh, beard and and clothing, and uh, mild damage. But okay, he's still looking pretty all right. Anything else? Nope, that's it, sir. All right, thank you. So yeah, what can we do next? Well, being the last one in the room, I'm gonna come out as well. <laughs> Other oh, lonely. Uh, at... Oh, he's around the corner now. Okay. Yeah, he's hiding. Scary, scary, scary spellcasters. No. Yeah, there's, there's not really any way I'm going to be getting him from around here, so instead, I'm gonna... Ah, I can't quite see around this corner, but I want to just check to see where what's behind us. Because that's where they originally were coming from, correct? Yes. It is from the left side. Mm -hmm. Is this like a door or something? Yeah, there's, there's there were doors there that, um, that were opened. They're just like back against the walls. They're thrown open by the large... Okay, so they're still open. Yes. Yeah. And you can see okay. inside, um, the doors that you can see on the inside there. I can't really do much. I'm just going to go ahead and mm -hmm. use action for, for dashing or whatever okay. so I can get out a little bit more just to get a better view. Yeah, okay. And you, yeah, you run into oh, that room good. there. And let me find that for you. Um, so, yeah, come on, come on. Right. so yeah, as you run in there, you see... Um, there's a lone, there's a low stone table um, in the middle of this room, flanked by stone benches, um, and then there are some braziers with glowing hot coals on the walls, heating and lighting the room. And then 
there are um, there's a kind of mist of hazy smoke kind of hanging in the air um, that kind of makes your nose wrinkle um, and you see the featureless stone doors in the walls, some of which have been thrown open so it looks like maybe the Durga were in there Okay, but it was just kind of like a uh, room, a meeting room or something, nothing. Indeed. Uh, great. But, okay. um, what's what's your passive? I was gonna say, can I look around? My passive is seventeen. Yeah, not having dashed. No, you couldn't. You couldn't really look around as well. That's okay. that will take your action to search in combat. But with your passive perception, such as it is, um, yes. You notice up to the north here. Okay. See that? Yep. Just up to the north of you there, there is a swirling in the smoke next to the wall, that eastern wall there, as if air is escaping from something and disturbing the smoke okay. in the air there. But there's no door there that you can see. Right, right. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it probably for the next round, but yep, that's yep. all I'm doing. Gotcha. Mockingbird. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I would like to finish what I started here. Um, I'll kind of dip around the corner right here and do the old Beyblade special. Go for it. Okay, I'll do short sword first. Bowsers. That Very is nuts. no good. Okay. Uh, with the dagger yeah, follow-up. Like a little higher than that. Yeah, just a, just a teeny bit. <laughs> Um, so I'll do Booming Blade on this one, hopefully that connects. Hey, uh, that's the dagger's coming in clutch. Okay. But that's in the offhand, so that is four damage. Yes, four plus the sneak attack, though, which is a so nine in total. Yes, that's right. All okay, right, and so. that bloodies him. Okay, that'll be so me, yeah. and then I'll just... Dance around the corner, and... <laughs> Out of there. Okie dokie. So yeah, he's uh, blooded. Mm -hmm. Yep, that'll be so you Cuts there. Um, he's going to attack you as you leave, though. Uh, with fancy footwork. I can Sorry. Oh, excuse me. What's the what's the uh, thing on that? Is it if you if you injure them, or if you if attack I, them? Yeah. If, if I hit uh, a creature on my turn, then they cannot use the attack of opportunity. Nice. I can pull up the exact thing here for you in a second. Yeah, I've got it. Just, yeah, yeah. Make a melee attack. No, if, if you make a melee attack, you don't even have to hit them. Oh, that's... wow. Sweet. Yeah, but it's, I could it's, have run that last turn. But it's only, it's only the one that you attacked. The other one could have. But yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to hit. Okay. It is his turn. So, seeing you all come just, like, pouring out into the corridor here, he's just gonna, like, he's just gonna, like, look down at his bleeding side where this dagger was just thrust at him. He's just like... <laughs> And just like comes charging towards Trovus, and Trovus is like, "Yes, this is it!" <laughs> and he's waiting for him, and he just comes boom, boom, boom forward, and um, let's put this one in the back. And he's gonna wail on Trovus with his war pick, enlarged. Boop. Oh, it only gets a six. <laughs> And Trovis, Trovis just like heroically just like swoosh with his longsword and deflects the war pick into the wall. And he's like, <laughs> you have to get up earlier in the morning than that, old boy. And Kestrel's like, Kestrel's like, yes, that's right, Speaker, you tell him. And she's going to take a shot at the one behind, from behind Trovis. Um, for, not that one, I keep opening the wrong stat book. This one. Oop. And hits for seven piercing. And this one is now on its last legs. Switch that over there. Boop, boop. And it's Trovis's turn. He turns. He turns to you, Mockingbird. He's like, "Mind if I do?" After you. And he's like, Speaker. spins it round. Spins it round again. Two-handed. Just like just goes for the uh, Duragra with this long sword of his, um, the first epic swing, whoosh, eighteen for six slashing damage. Yep, he only had four HP left. So Trovis just like swings the blade round, perfectly balanced. He's clearly had years and years of fighting and campaigning with this blade, 
but kept in very good condition. You can see the blade glinting in the brazier lights and the torch lights in the tunnel here. And he just brings it in a huge arc and just cuts across the chest of the Jirgar, which, as it falls backwards, also reduces in size to a regular Jirgar corpse. And we are out of initiative. Thank God. Um, <laughs> Tom, Tom brings a, a pulls a potion out of his pack. It's got this swirling, uh, milky look to it, and he hands it over to um, Mame, and he says, uh, "Here, drink this." Okay. I, I take the potion. Mm-hmm. And I drink it. Okay, let's figure out what it does. God damn it! No! <laughs> <laughs> you should have known when you said it was like this milky white substance. Like, Healy potions are definitely red. <laughs> I know, but I'm just like, it's a, it pro probably has some, you know, meat in it or what? something. It does taste kind of like beer, um, but you feel kind of light. Lighter than you normally feel, which is usually pretty light because you have the wings. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of start to... Oh no. <laughs> come off the ground. Uh, and you have a flying speed of 10 for uh, 10 minutes. Yes! And I'm a bird! <laughs> and I have wings left! <sighs> humble folk. No, not so humble anymore. <laughs> well... I was I, I was fly. hoping that you would heal from that, but um, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm still working on that one. Where's, the, where's that hype phoenix? Get the hype phoenix flying. <laughs> hype, fly, fly, fly like mommy can fly. Fly. Okay. I'm just gonna cast good berry. I'm gonna cast good berry. So just summon ten berries and just start popping them in. Who else gotcha, is gotcha. injured? Um, one? Everyone, could you I have most take, of my blood? Take that blessed. Take that blessed mark off yourself, there, please. All right. If you click on the token and then on the little circular thing to access those, yeah. Next, the little circular thing round by okay. the, the cog, yeah. Sorry, Mama, I'm uh, still trying to figure that one out. It's, it's fine, I'm just like there floating. We need some berries. I need some <laughs> berries. I'll take some berries. I've got about half of my blood. Now, oh, now come on. <laughs> uh, I would also like to be... Hey, got off gaming. Welcome back. We just uh... survived an attack of Jurgar. Now, um, Mame, you have a flying speed, not a hover speed. <laughs> you do have to land each time mm. you fly. Otherwise, you will okay. fall onto the ground. But I cannot fall because I have wings. That is true. Um, you see Soyala go padding off to the north around that corner. <gasps> What's that sound? Oh dear. Trovis. Yeah. Trovis is like, oh, was that, was that Bessie? I think that was Bessie. Bessie! And it's coming from that south tunnel where the, uh, where the Jura was hiding. Mm. But, Sayora, yes, what do you say to the others as you go back in that direction? I was actually going to inspect the swirling uh, mm -hmm. air or wind that yep. was kind of coming there and inspect the, the area near it, the walls. Okay, um, yeah, as you do, um, with your with your perception being as it is, um, you, as you get close enough to inspect the wall properly, you can see there is a faint outline of a secret door. And you can see what looks like a latch that could be used to open that. You, you guys have apprehended the Draugrs out there. Oh, um, apprehended. <laughs> yes. Yes. That. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> well, we can uh, question them later. While you guys were doing that, I found this door here. You gonna open it? Yes, I'm going to try to. Okay, so you reach up your, reach better. up your little beans, and with a little click. It slides. As uh, Oral said in the opening scene, they have no love of form, but they do love function, and they do build things very well. So, this secret door 
slides effortlessly into the wall, revealing a tunnel. Secret oh. tunnel. Nice find. You should you should just eat the rest Locking. of the good berries. Oh, can't get in there. <laughs> one, one more, one more up. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, it was. I was just trying to make sure that there were no more in here. This was the way that they came from. So, but the last all I saw was nothing but some air over here, some wind, a, a draft of some sort. Sure enough, they seem to have another way around. Indeed. Let's check it out. What's in there? Okay, so as you yeah head into there, let me get uh, that uh, description for you. I'm afraid oh, the thank you, Mame. players. That's now, as you as you come down the end of this corridor, you can very clearly see that there is another secret door at the other end. So it just seems to be a short connecting tunnel. Okay. And you can, from where you are there, you can kind of hear Trovis and uh, Kestrel talking to each other. They're not being loud, but um, you can kind of hear their voices coming from. You know, echoing around like the long way that you've come, and also kind of coming from ahead of you as well in some way. So you think there might be a, li a link through there? Okay, so can I open this up from this side? Indeed. Let me get Just that for that. you. Mm, boop. And it opens into a room, which I shall describe for you. As you slide, cautiously slide, peeking through, you see that the coast is clear and you open this diagonal door on the corner of the room into this small rectangular room here, and you see two sets of double doors north and south, and you can hear Kestrel and Trovus talking through the south doors and there's a brazier of glowing hot coals once more standing in each corner and in the middle of the room, which they didn't, they didn't decide to put on the map here, we just got our rooms here, they don't put much furniture and things in these maps. Um, in the middle of the room, there is a low stone table. And on top of that, there is a large illustration drawn on the table's surface that looks somewhat like a map. If you'd care, care to look look closer, you can have a proper look. Check that out. Okay. Yeah. As you enter the center of the room and look more closely, you can see that this is a pretty accurate depiction of Tent House. And Siona, you especially recognize this from you know from lessons as a child, um, as you know kind of geography of the region. Um, and this, yeah, you can see Tent Towns. You can see a, a slight depiction of the um, Spine of the World Mountains, Kelvin's Cairn there. It's all there. And then, Does the map look marked in any way, or...? Well, one thing definitely stands out. Um, mounted on top of a thin iron stand on the table, there is a six-inch tall dragon figurine, which oh, no. is carved out of a familiar black crystal. Oh. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh, and, be Tom, you're interested to see... Oh, sorry, Sayana. Say again. Uh, could this be one of the things we're looking for? It's definitely a piece. Yes. It's definitely the same stuff. You would recognize it by now. And Tom, you're quite interested. The um, the figurine stand is attached to this iron rod, and it goes disappears into a groove in the table. And you can see the groove is carved into the table and kind of works around the surface of this map. And over on the edge of the table, on your side, Tom, you can see that there is a small lever. Uh, Tolman inspects it for a bit, mm -hmm. trying to <laughs> figure out what yes. it could do before he pulls the lever that could be bad. 
we're, we're probably stressing out RNG in chat here because we, we were just talking about mimics last night. <laughs> Sorry, Sailor, was it? Uh, and don't touch the dragon either. That, that was, as far as we knew, to have bad effects on people. Right, you remember? Yeah, that was that was not advised. <laughs> um, so yeah, Tolna Tol is like I'm inspecting clock. the mechanics of this, figuring out. Okay. Trying to figure out what's gonna happen when, when he pulls the lever because he's going to. Um, <laughs> While they're doing that, can I put my ear to the door um, and kind of see if there's anybody to the north of us, or maybe peek through like a keyhole if there's any any okay. sort of crack there or anything like that? Yes, indeed. So, you go up to that door there and you're kind of listening carefully. Give me a perception check, please. Oh yeah, that was that. That's yeah, that's the bad part of this plot. <laughs> uh, that's how it works, uh, in am Eh, 13. 13's not bad, not bad. Um, so the best of your ability, you do not hear anything. Okay, I'll just kind of relax a little bit and then go see what the others are doing. Okay. Tom, you see this little dragon, its wings outstretched, fairly nicely carved little piece, and it just seems to be some kind of mechanism, and, and if you if you pull the lever, it's clearly going to make it move, you think. Pull the lever. Okay. That, that, okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> As Tom pulls the lever, the table shifts and the groove widens into a toothy more. As a tongue laps. No, it doesn't. It's not a mimic. It's not a mimic, <laughs> chat. It's not a mimic. Leave it alone. <laughs> Sorry. Um, As you pull the lever, the little crystal dragon takes flight and it moves on some kind of mechanism you'd be very interested to see the interior of this table as well Tom but it oh, moves I'm going, I, I'm going to see the <laughs> <laughs> as you pull the lever it moves along this groove carved into the table which makes the figurine fly as it were from one settlement to the next in a large loop going all the way around ten towns. Hmm. Hmm. Does it look good? Just no. a moment. What do you think it means? Well, I need to figure out what it means. Just a moment, please. Um, he's going to open these doors. To the south? Yeah. Okay. You do. Hang on. If I get it. There it is. Boom. One. Two. He's gonna come over to one of these Dwergar, pick up one of their war picks, come back. <laughs> Thomas is like, oh, how did, how did you get in there? Um, just, what have, just what have you found? I need to do some, um, I guess we call it percussive dissection. I don't know. Um, and he's gonna try to use the war pick. The... If I can just say one thing there, Tom, as you open those doors and you're just kind of focusing on the bodies of the uh, of the Dwergar, you stoop down, you pick up a war pick. And as you do, can you just go back down to the Jurgar there? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Andy. I like this music. Yeah, it's cool. Eh? As you go down to that um, there, you see shimmering out of invisibility a Jurgar standing <laughs> on the corner there, conspicuously oh. without. A war pick. Um, under common, I suppose, if that's necessary. Uh, hello? Hello. I presume you're the one that killed the other one? Yeah. What, why'd you do that? He stands a little straighter, puts a fist on his chest. The ale must flow. Oh, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> New pet. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And he stands there. And Mockingbird, this is the room you heard a distinct click and a whirring of, of mechanisms as the door opened before. Oh. This is where oh. you, you can you can fathom out. This is where you're looking from outside. This is the room. Uh, that room to the south. That's where that elevator thing is. Just kind of 
gesture over to Toln. Toln, are we killing this one? No. No? That's great. All right. And then I'll go back into this room and kind of start examining the map and the dragon and everything like that. I will do the same. Okay. Uh, so are... The ale's not flowing now? Has it say, doesn't say anything else. He's just stand, standing there, silent, sentry. Keeping, it, it, from time to time, he just look, as the, um, as the elevator rattles past, and you can see another fascinating mechanism that you would like to spend some time with, probably. Um, you see this caged box just kind of descend out of the ceiling, stop for a minute or so in the room. And as it descends out of the ceiling, you can see he looks over to see if there's anyone riding in it, and then turns back when he's safe that there's, no, there's nobody there. Well, how, how heavy is a war pick? Um, good question. Can you equip one <laughs> in your uh, character sheet and find out? I mean, you would be fine. Uh, I was gonna mage hand him a war pick. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> um, you could you can gesture to the other one. There's the other one lying on the floor there. Uh, it's two pounds. There you go. Too much so ice. Too heavy, I assume. What's what's uh, mage hand capable of? I think it's ten. Ten pounds. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so we'll we'll pick up the other war pick and we'll hand it off to him and. Okay. Ail, so yeah, the still. Must... What what does your mage hand look like? Um, doesn't look like much of anything. <laughs> um, it looks like he's picking something up from afar and. Okay. So yeah, you just he, and he kind of start, he starts a little as you see this war pick like levitate and floats towards him, and he looks questioningly, questioningly at you. It kind of kind of looks like, you know, like you imagine Star Wars, right? Yeah. And then he just pulls the pulls the war pick over, and, uh, well, I think you'll need one of these, so. And he just, it's like he, he just plucks it out of the air and beats it off his armor. The ale must flow. Must flow. God, I like this guy. And he stands there, <laughs> uh, war pick in hand, ready for any trouble. All right. Um, and then he walks you definitely, back. And th during this during this exchange, you definitely heard that the goats, the missing goats, are, b are beyond him in that room. If I don't have to kill him. There they are. Um, <laughs> we'll go. We'll go back into this room and just sort of. Try to dismantle this thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, what are you doing? Well, <laughs> Tom comes back and starts having at this table. Yeah. So I would have been, I think, still. Did, had everyone left the room? Um, briefly, it seems. Yes. There's this, this yeah. sudden. Everyone was just keeping an eye on this exchange with this uh, this Jirga, but it seems seems yeah. pretty okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if she would have look, looked a little bit, but once it was like there was no hostility, uh, gone back to looking at this map, yeah. trying to see... <laughs> Quick, her, while, it, while it lasts. <laughs> yeah, while it lasts. Um, that there must be some sort of... Yeah, you said it go, It looks like it goes in a circle. Like there's a track or something? Yes, yeah, there's a definite route. What areas does it go through? Um, well, like, is there anything specifically that it goes through? Like, any uh, certain buildings I, or? I will show you a picture, but I must confess, I have moved where this fortress is, so it's not exactly entirely accurate. <laughs> okay, but it gives you a good idea. So, have a look at this. Oop! Dragon's flight path. So, some blight is not down in the south there. It's up in Kelvin's Cairn. So, imagine imagine if it starts at Kelvin's Cairn and then goes anti-clockwise around and then goes from um from Bryn Shander, it would go to Dugan's Hall. And so, so it just skips that huge spike down to the south. Oh, okay. 
Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm trying to show you. It's uh, taking a while. Sorry, my computer's trying to run everything, so it takes a while to enlarge things. Not Jirga. Yeah. Jirga are enlarged right away, but... So uh, this is... yeah. Okay. So basically, yeah, it goes from Kelvin's Cairn and then anti-clockwise around all of the ten towns. Yeah, okay. So, so going going to your hometown spot? fairly early on. I was gonna say, what spot is it? Was it currently at to where it went now? It started. It started at Kelvin's Cairn and then went anti-clockwise all the way around and back to Kelvin's Cairn. Okay. Oh, it went a whole cycle. Yes. Oh, okay. It didn't stop at a certain spot. Okay. But yeah, that is a little bit foreboding that it goes in my direction. There we go. Of my hometown. Yes, so it's going to go, it goes towards, yeah, the first, the first stop on the route is Tourmaline. Wow, okay. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Oh, <laughs> and she, she chose her hometown. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, man, what, what do we do with, the, with this? I, I don't know what to do with this information yet. Um. At this point, Tolan, Tolan is using his Tinker's tools to try and get things out without... Uh, okay, Tolan is back. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, it seems uh -oh. as though... Yeah, yeah. It seems as though it's going counterclockwise. Maybe this is an attack movement or a movement of... Maybe where they get certain resources? I'm not sure. Hockingbirds, okay, can you give me an insight check, please? Uh, that is nature based, right? Well, I'll do what I can. Insights. Wait. Insight. Yep. Uh, yeah, wisdom, yeah. Your fave. Oh boy. Oh, that's another 13. Not Lucky bad. With, with a minus one, not bad. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, so you. You're kind of like looking over this scene, and you kind of look around the room, and this is definitely. A planning group. Hmm. Were Garo here, he would call it a war room. Hmm. But you, ha you have never been, you've never been in a war room. But you have seen setups like this for planning operations. Hmm. You have a sudden kind of flashback to building plants laid out on trestle tables in darkened basements. Various people gathered around them. And one figure standing at the head of the table wearing a hat very much like the brooch you took from Sephic Kaltra. Dark skin fine, if not noisy, clothes. A drow. Do you remember his distinct Menzoberenzen accent, much like Birel's was? Ah. <laughs> Alright. Metagaming, I'm pretty sure I know who this is, but, okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, I just got that sort of flashback from entering this room and seeing yeah and seeing this, 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 la this layout here yeah definitely so now a little bit put off I'm gonna turn my attention to the duogar next to me and kind of ask him a couple questions is he is he paying attention or is he still staring at home oh, yeah. and thinking about beer <laughs> no he's 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 clearly on guard okay and he's like he kind of glow glow glowers at you as you come right next to him as you come down there actually I, I, sorry I didn't put the tokens on the map there but you do see um, the goats in that room. Ah. I'll nod my head towards the goats. Not mm -hmm. going to take any hostage this time. And you and can see, I'll you can see over here. You can see there's the uh, arrow slit where you uh, hmm. peeked right in there, before, yeah. and you can see um, a mechanism that is clearly um, for for operating the doors and portcullis. Hmm. All right. Well, in the meantime, I'll sheath my weapons and just kind of take a relaxed sort of stance against the archway opposite this guy. Okay. Um, and, hey, friend, uh, what, what's your name? What do they call you here? What language are you speaking? Ah, oh, common. See if he picks up on that. He kind of shakes his head. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't look like he understands. I'll switch to uh, everybody's favorite uh, deep speech and see if that, that 
switches it up enough. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> He, re he, re he recoils a little. No, not that one. And he, he, he calls out to you. He calls out to you, Tom. He's like, Oi, do you, do you vouch for this one? In Undercommon. Yeah, he's all right. Um, Why does he speak the language of the brain stealers? No. <laughs> that's a good question. Duraga do not like mind flares at all. <laughs> that's a that's a good question. Um Mockingbird, why do you speak that language? I don't know, ask Mame. It's been a weird couple of months, man. I think um Tullin, I think it has to do with this. I point to the back of my school, you know, the hag. Oh yeah, it might. Um, I mean, switch back to Undercommon. I think they might have been victims of something of their kind. He turns to you. He looks almost sympathetic, Mockingbird. And Tom, as you're saying this, and as he mentioned brain stealers, you have a flash of memory as well. Thank God we have our therapist here. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so Yala breaks out her notebook and her port portable couch. <laughs> um, you have a flash of, of uh, memory as well. Your home, wherever it was, long ago, was destroyed by Mind Flayers and then reclaimed by your current king. Tone looks very confused for a few moments. Let's see. Uh, huh. You okay there, Tom? <laughs> I just remembered I don't like mind flares. And this Why I didn't remember what those were until then. This Durgar is looking very impressed. He's just like he's just like nodding around at all of you. He's like, yeah, we're all in agreement here, we're all in agreement. Yep, yep, brains stay in the head. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, there's our common ground. <laughs> Under common ground. In a, in a in a fa in a last ditch attempt, I'm going to try to speak Elvish which uh, I forgot that I knew, to be completely honest. <laughs> and uh, pray to God that he uh, that he understands that. And if not, then... He... He hooks something up and spits on the floor. I'll just kind of smile and nod at that gesture and then <laughs> what continue you, what, walking into this room. It, 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 Tolan is, you know, working on this thing, trying to get it free. Uh -huh. um, what do you want to ask him? <laughs> ah, you know how many of his friends are still kicking around here? Yeah, pertinent information. Uh, Tone turns back. Uh, he wants to know how many of your friends are still around here. My friends. Are you kind of just just like round the corner, like to the east? My friends and my good lady are in the dining hall. You should talk with her. Oh, she wants. She wants some light gone. Ooh. The ale must flow. I'm all about that. Uh, uh, Tone switches back to common. I'm all about what this guy is saying. What did um, he say, Tone? Hey, yeah, repeat. Repeat. Mm. Especially uh, he emphasizes uh, Tone, in Tone's um, re um, repetition. He very much emphasizes that the ale must flow part. <laughs> and Mame, as you as you walk to the corner there, um, sorry everyone, let me bring you, <laughs> everyone's kind of spread out here. Um, as you go to the sorry. corner there, no, no, it's okay, um, you can see here, that's going to ping for you, if I'm, I'm on the wrong layer, hang on, let me go on the right layer, <laughs> there, <laughs> down the corridor. I wonder if I can shape change it to a Actually, is that... What's that there? Okay, that's something else. 
Um, yeah, down the corridor there, you can see a set of double doors on the north wall. Which just seems to be what the, the uh, other Durgar was gesturing towards. I see a pair of double doors. Mm -hmm. I guess this is where oh, his lady is. Well, Sorry, chat. It's me... out of view. Give me just a just a moment here, yeah. and we'll we'll go say hi to her. Um, any luck? Any luck getting this free, John? Um, give me a uh, sleight of hand check with proficiency. Now, Soyala, there's that lovely set of double doors up there, just sitting there. There are, but we are quite spread out, and I am not about to open other doors. Just Mockingbird, yet. Mockingbird told you there's nothing in that room before he went south. Nothing in sleight of hand, so let's just. Perfect. Actually, as, as yeah, says that, I'm going to open these doors over here. Actually, t take a peek through first, and maybe okay, listen. Let's go. Let's go one at a time. One at a time. <laughs> Everyone's it's like split the party four ways. <laughs> this can only end well. <laughs> okay. So first things first. Tom. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah. You you very expertly managed to um, figure out the workings of this thing, and you figure out how it works. And, how the lever sets the dragon on a, a single track around. Can I take the... With Mage Hand, can I take... Disassemble and take off the, uh... The piece? Uh, if you want, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap uh, it in the claw. Dragon. Okay. Yeah, but with, with Mage Hand, we'll wrap... Take it off, put the dragon in a cloth. Okay, um, for future reference... Um, because, you know, I don't want to have to come back and search for this later. Um... If you sell that, it'll be worth 50 gold pieces. Oh, very nice. Which I think I think that's what the speaker said he was going to give you for each chunk as well, wasn't it? That you retrieved. I believe. Speaker Wayland back in East Haven. He said there was, there, was, there, was, there was a number involved, but we shall find that out later. Okay. So, yes, you can put that <coughs> dragon figurine. Okay. Um, next was Soyal. What's your name? Okay, well, I was with Tom, so seeing mm -hmm. that be removed successfully, um, yeah, I guess, uh, Tom, do you, should we check this door here? I think we should go to the or east first. Go back to, okay. I think we should rejoin them now that I've got this, this thing here. Okay, that would be probably the wisest choice. I worry that you were we came, we were bombarded with a fight, and it's been quiet since. So, yes, let's go with the others. So we rejoin them. Now, Tom, as you're finishing up dealing with this thing, you do find a little kind of almost like pocket kind of shelf, almost kind of little ledge under the um, surface of the table as you're getting down there to get get uh, tinkery with it and inside you find a few documents oh, let's take a look and you see what are clearly the designs for making this table and you see sketches of ten towns more rudimentary than what's on the table surface when again clearly used when they were making the thing and you find a letter You read it? Yes. It says... Sunblight. I thank you dearly... for the shards... and pieces of Shardalin... you were able to spare. I trust that the payment was satisfactory. If you have any other off-cuttings and leftovers in the construction of your grand design, please deliver them as before via one of your sons, perchance, to the same drop-off point as before. How deliciously vague. That wasn't the end of the letter. Oh. There's a dramatic pause. 
as it says, to the same drop-off point as before. The meat hall of good meat. Ooh. Signed, D. S. And we, dear players and dear viewers, shall stop there. As we have gained a foothold and an ally in the fortress of Sunblight, up in the craggy outcroppings of Kelvin's Cairn. So, there you have it. Mysteries. What is the connection between this Duragar fortress and our player's hometown, base town of Goodmead? Their very own Mead Hall, no less. We shall find out as they explore more of this fortress next time. So please do come on by if you can as we return to Icewind Dale next Tuesday. But. If you have the chance, please do swing by the channel before that, because we have a lot going on. <laughs> first things first. Thursday, we have our double feature. Although over in North America, it's uh, Wednesday, Thursday, double whammy. As for me, at least, Thursday lunchtime, we go into the Underdark from where these Duragar came. And we have our Out of the Abyss campaign. Then, later on that day, we have our rather spectacular spiraling ever and ever into more and more chaos Curse of Strahd campaign. It seems they're headed to Castle Ravenloft to rescue Esmeralda. What awaits them when they arrive? And down in the Underdark, what will the party do after suffering such a tragic loss in their escape from the drow encampment as Sator, cleric of Illmater, Ning, was captured and slowly dissolved by a grey ooze, sacrificing herself that her friends could escape into the Underdark. And, last but not least, in our week of fun, Friday evening for us here is Descent into Avernus. Without Josh this week, unfortunately. I hope they leave some of that total death cleric for you. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just, I'm hoping they decide that this, this mirror is a very enticing opportunity for them. We shall see. And that'll bring us right round past the weekend and up to the frozen north once more. So, thank you everybody for coming by. A pleasure as always. And let's see who's knocking around online as we go our raiding. So please stick around and if you've got them, send those phoenixes flying as we... Let's have a look here. Uh, okay, I will I will decide someone that we can go a raid into. So please stick around for that and see what's going on on all these other wonderful channels that are playing D and D and enjoying this hobby of ours this evening or whenever you are. So, everybody, as we like to say around these parts, oh yes, me to say. Oh yes, me to say. Oh yes, me. Oh yes, me.